I recently got this subwoofer, the JL Audio 13W7. Now to properly enjoy this subwoofer and optimize its performance for my application, I of course need to build a custom subwoofer enclosure. What air volume and tuning did I decide on? How do we cut and make each of these pieces? And what steps are involved with the custom subwoofer box build process? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the channel where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's get on into it. Before we can start building a subwoofer enclosure for our 13W7, we first want to have a good plan. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be building a ported enclosure that is three cubic foot at 30 Hertz. The advantage of having a custom design plan for our box is we can tailor our performance to the exact design goals that we have for this system. JL Audio's suggested ported enclosure is 2.375 cubic feet at 34.6 hertz. So I ended up going a little bit larger on the air volume and a little bit lower on the tuning as it will allow me to get a little bit more low end extension at the expense of giving up a little bit of overall output. If you've watched my channel before, you've probably heard me say this before, everything in car audio is about trade-offs. So in this case, we're sacrificing a little bit of the overall output to have a little bit more low-end bass. Again, one of the benefits of having a custom enclosure design and a shameless plug here, if you would like me to make a custom blueprint for you that you can use as a guide to build your own box, this has all the different dimensions that you need for every piece. You guys can purchase the design at my website, caraudiofabrication.com. So time to get the table saw fired up. I'm first going to cut my two front baffle pieces along with the back piece because those are all the same size. And then I'm going to cut my top and bottom because all those pieces are all the same width. In fact, that's a pro tip for you guys. You wanna be adjusting your fence if you are using a table saw as little as possible. And also, if you're not adjusting your fence, you're going to make sure that each of those cuts is the exact same dimension. So try to bundle all of the like dimension cuts together as much as you can as you go through this process. So now that we have those five pieces made, I'm going to switch to cutting the two side pieces, the two port wall pieces, and the brace. And again, all of these pieces here are designed to be the same height. They're all a height of 14.5 inches inside of the enclosure. So I'm gonna make all of those common cuts first at that 14 and a half inch value. And then off of each of those long strips that I make that are 14 and a half inches tall, I'm going to cut the shorter sections. Now that we got those pieces cut out, we're going to move on to cutting out these smaller little detail pieces. So the 45s that are in the corners to add a little bit of additional strength to the enclosure, along with this port 45 piece, and then what I call the port end brace. It just adds a little bit more thickness to the end of our port there. We're gonna cut those pieces and those are all again that same 14 and a half inch dimension. And usually we end up with a little bit of scrap from our previous cuts. So that's perfect to cut our smaller pieces because you can see this is that 14 and a half inch dimension. So I can cut the smaller pieces out of this.
So we now have all of our pieces cut and ready for the detail work. For things like cutting out our holes and cutting out the squares on the inside of that window brace and doing some of the different router work we're going to do. We'll be getting into all that in a second, but really quick, I do want to take a second to thank our sponsor for this video, Crutchfield. So I recently purchased this Bluetooth speaker from Crutchfield. Side note, this thing is awesome with its portable battery supply. It's going to be perfect for outdoor summer parties. Unfortunately, only a few days after I purchased this speaker, I noticed that it was now on sale for $70 less than what I had spent. Well, no big deal because I knew Crutchfield has 60 day price drop protection. I could have called and talked to their US based customer support team, but instead I simply opened a chat and within minutes they had started a refund for the difference in the sale amount. So next time you need speakers or any car audio gear, you can purchase from Crutchfield with confidence. Learn more and get a special offer for car audio fabrication fans at the link on screen or down in the video description. So the first piece I wanna to start to add the detail work to is one of the front baffle pieces. This is the piece that's going to have that smaller cutout diameter for the subwoofer. I'm going to need to add the hole for the port and I'm also going to need to add the hole obviously for the subwoofer. Now a little trick that we can do here with the W7 in particular is we can use this ring that comes as part of the shipping materials to actually make our cutout hole. We're going to use it as a guide on the router. In fact there's something a little bit different that I'm going to be doing here. I want to have two thicknesses of wood for where the bolts go through into the enclosure not just the one thickness that's shown here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an exact copy of this. That way I can keep this one for the packaging materials and I'm going to take the copied piece and I'm going to permanently attach it inside the enclosure. So this thickness of the piece here will actually be two thicknesses and the other advantage there is then I can use this outside piece that I'm going to flush the subwoofer in with. I can do detailed work on the front of the enclosure to give this enclosure a unique look. So I've got all my dimensions in my design here. Let's continue on with our build. So here it is guys, our first baffle piece now complete along with that additional backing ring just to give us a little bit more material to bite into for those screws. Now what's nice about having this first baffle complete is when we go to make the second piece, the one that's going to be on the outside of the enclosure, we can do a little bit less work as we're not having to lay down templates again. We can just use this hole here and flush trim it on the router to our secondary piece. The only thing that will need to be different about that second baffle piece is obviously since this is going around the outside diameter of the subwoofer, we're going to need a larger hole. So we're going with that larger template size right there. With both of the baffle pieces now made, now I need to turn my attention to making this brace that goes on the inside of the enclosure. So again, I'll first be using my dimensions to mark up my piece and draw out that layout. 
And then I'm gonna use a drill for a starter hole so that I can rough cut using the jigsaw. And then once again, we're going to use some of our straight templates to make each of these cutouts, flush trimming them on the router. Here it is, our completed window brace. This is gonna add a ton of strength on the inside of the enclosure as it connects all of these different sides together. So now we need to start doing some of the detail work to each of these detailed pieces. First, we're gonna be loading up a round over bit and we're going to apply a rounded edge on the inside of this window brace. After adding those roundovers on the inside of the window brace, you can see this has much more of a finished look and that's also going to just allow air to oscillate back and forth over that surface more efficiently. There's several other areas I'm going to want to apply the roundover treatment. I wanna do it around the outside of the port opening here. I also wanna do it on the end of the inside of the port. I wanna do it on my port brace piece, and I also wanna do it on the corner of this port piece. So now all of our different pieces are ready to go. We've got all the detail work done. So now we can begin the assembly process. Now the biggest tips here are to make sure that we use plenty of wood glue. We wanna get 100% coverage on each mating surface between each of these pieces. And while we're going through the assembly process, we of course want to make sure that everything is good and square. So you'll be seeing me measuring out some of the offsets for the port, for instance, and some of the other locations throughout the build. So here we have it guys. Now for the time being, I'm going to hold off on attaching the secondary front baffle here. And that's just because I want to add some template work to the front of it. And we're gonna be covering that in the next video. I'm also holding off on attaching the top of the enclosure for the time being, just because I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do for that front template work quite yet. And I might need to have some sort of fasteners holding on that template work from the back. So for right now, we're leaving off the top. If you're new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber so that you can catch that next video along with other videos in the future helping you learn how to design, build, and install your dream car audio system. Next time you are picking out car audio gear, don't forget that you can purchase with confidence with our show sponsor, Crutchfield. Learn more and get a special offer for car audio fabrication fans at the link on screen or down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Jerry, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible and thank you guys for tuning in and watching.